This is the key to your test review. So the first part is we're going to use the rational zero theorem to list all possible rational zeros. Please read these directions. If all it asks you to do is list the possible zeros, nobody is asking you to find all the zeros. So make sure you understand what the question is being what question is being asked. To find the possible rational zeros, I'm going to make a ratio of the factors of the numerator. One plus or minus two. Three does not work. Plus or minus four. Five, six do not work. Seven does. Four times seven is twenty-eight. So now I just gotta match two up with fourteen and one up with twenty-eight. Then the denominator the factors of the leading coefficient, so plus or minus one. Plus or minus two. So my possible zeros would be, well, it's all of the numerator over one, which just basically means all of the numerator. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, minus four, plus or minus seven, plus or minus three, plus or minus twenty-eight. Then all of the numerator over 2. So 1 over 2 is going to be plus or minus 1 half. 2 over 2 4 over 2. We have that. 7 over 2 is plus or minus 7 halves. 14 over 2 is 7. 28 over 2 is 14. So these are my possible rational zeros. Okay, so then on number two, when your leading coefficient is one, that just means all you're going to have in the denominator will be one. So you don't even have to worry about the fraction. You can just come up with your possible rational zeros as being the factors of the constant term. So plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus five, and plus or minus fifteen. There you go. All right, so then I'm going to use Descartes' rule of signs to give the possible number of positive and negative real zeros. Okay, not necessarily rational, but negative. Again, not asking you what the actual zeros are, and not even asking you what the possible one and two. Okay, this is where we look at the signs and the when the signs change from positive to negative. So I'm going to look for possible positive and negative. So when I do it starts off negative, okay? My leading coefficient is negative. It changes to positive, okay? Then it stays positive, then it changes to negative, then it stays negative. So there's two variations of signs. The f of x gives me the positive, so it's 2 or 0. Okay, you go less than that by an even number. Then I have to look at f of negative x. So f of negative x is pretty easy to figure out. I just change the signs on everything with an odd exponent. So this would be a positive x to the fifth minus 18x cubed plus 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. Okay, so this was positive to begin with, changes to negative, negative to positive, stays positive, positive, changes to negative. So there's one, two, three variations in signs, so it's three or one. So then I look at Number four, I'm looking for positive and negative. So it starts off positive, stays positive, changes to negative. It was negative, changes to positive, positive changes to negative. So the positive is three or one. Then I have to find f of x. Change the signs on everything with an odd exponent. So x to the fourth minus 
hang on, minus 7x cubed minus 9x squared minus x minus 2. So it was positive and just a negative, stays negative, stays negative, stays negative. So there's only one variation in signs, so it's just 1. If you get 0 or 1, you don't get anything else. Anything higher than that, 2 and up, you're going to have more than one thing. Some of y'all are leaving off the other parts of that. All right, so now we're going to use the given zeros to write a polynomial function, a fractional bar, just right there. So I have these zeros, which means I need to write my function. So is equal to zero, which means there's just an x. And then I've got x, and this is minus one, so, or negative one, so it's going to be x plus one. That multiplicity is two, so it's squared. This is not x minus three four, or minus four thirds. This is going to be three x minus four, because that's what, what I would get, or this is where I would start this out of four and then divide by three. All right, so when I'm going to multiply this out, I am going to square this one and multiply this x into here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this part first, multiply that in there. So this is going to give me 3x squared minus 4x, and that's going to be multiplied by this. When I square that, that is a perfect square trinomial, so that'll give me x squared. Multiply these two together and double it, so that's plus 2x, square this, plus 1. Then I'm going to distribute all this, so 3x squared times all of this will give me 3x to the fourth, plus 6x cubed, plus 3 squared. And the negative 4x multiplied through will be minus 4x cubed, minus 8x squared, minus 4x. And to clean all that up, my final function, 3x to the fourth, I took care of that one. I've got 2 cubed, so that'll give me a plus cubed. I've got 2 of the squared. So I'll give negative 5x squared and then minus 4x. Here is my final function. Right. So I'm going to do the same thing with number 6 here. I've got f of x equals, there's four, give me four terms here because I have plus or minus 5, so I'll get x plus 5 times x minus 5. I have plus or minus 3 squared of 2, so x plus 3 squared of 2, x minus 3 squared of 2. So this right here is a difference of squares, so that's going to give me x squared minus 25. This here is also a difference of squares, so x squared minus, and then I've got a square, the 3 squared of 2, so 3 squared of 2 squared. As a little reminder, hopefully we don't all have to go over here off to the side. Square 3 and get 9, square root of 2, square root of 18. So then I just have to multiply this together, and that's going to give me f of x is equal to x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, negative 18x squared and negative 25x squared gives me negative 43x squared. Negative 25 times negative 18 is going to be positive. Well, if I do 25 times 20, that's going to be 500. But I got away, so it's going to be 4. There is my polynomial. All right, number seven. Six. Is a root, then a minus bi is also. What I'm missing is negative 1 plus 3. Okay, so that's the one that's missing there. So when I set all this up, f of x is going to be equal to, this gives me x plus 3. Then I'm going to get x minus this one right here, this is negative 1 minus 3i, 
times x minus this term right here, which is going to be negative 1 plus. So now I'm going to right now x plus 3 because I've got these parentheses on here. I'm going to use some brackets. So when I do x times x, x squared. Do the outside x times here, which is negative, is going to give me Then I have to do the inside x times the whole term right here is also negative, so negative x times this right here, which is negative 1 minus 3i. Find these two together, so that's going to be negative 1 minus 3i, negative 1 plus. So now I'm going to start and distribute this stuff in here. And this x plus 3 is this is still x plus 3. Then this is just, that's the only x squared I have. Distribute this negative x in here. Negative x times negative 1 is going to be plus x. And then negative x times 3i is negative 3i times x. Distribute this in here. Negative x times negative 1 plus x. Negative x times negative 3i by x. Then I have to multiply these two together. This is the difference of squares as well. So this is going to give me negative 1 squared is going to be 1 minus the 3i squared I'm just going to leave that like that for right now. We'll come back and talk about that. <clears throat> All right. So then I'm going to have over here. X hanging out up front. All right. Then I have this x squared. That, take, that taken care of. Plus x plus x is going to be plus 2x minus 3ix plus 3ix. Let's just cancel out. Then at this plus 1 minus 3i squared. Okay, so 3 squared is 9. i squared is negative 1. So this is going to be 1 minus a negative 9, which is going to be plus 10. So then I multiply all that out. I'm going to multiply x times everything in here. So this is squared plus 10x. Then I'm going to multiply 3 by everything in here. So this is going to give me plus 3x squared plus 6x plus 30. Then I'm going to combine everything together. Or not everything together. I'm going to combine my like terms. And I get x cubed. x squared will be plus 5x squared. x is going to be plus 16x plus 30. This is my final function. Be very diligent in what you do here. Make sure you're paying attention to your signs and your parentheses. And you're understanding where everything is coming from because this is not difficult, but it is very, very easy to mess something up. Okay. All right, so then we're going to solve the inequalities. We're going to answer on the number line and write it using the interval notation. So the first thing I need to do is factor this. So this looks like I can factor by grouping. So out of these first two terms I can take out an x squared. It's going to leave me with 2x plus 5. Then out of here I'm going to need to factor out a negative. Okay, so if this is going to work, I've got to be left with 2x plus 5. So that would mean I would have to take out of here a negative 16, and that would leave me with 2x plus 5. 
So I'm going to make sure that this is really going to work. 2 times 16 is 32. 16 times 5 is 80, because 10 times 5 is 50, and 16 times 5 is 30, so you get 80. It's greater than 0. So it's giving me x squared minus 16 times 2x plus 5, greater than 0. Factor that some more, so this gives me x plus 4, x minus 4, and 2x plus 5. So in order to do my inequality, I have to have my zeros. My zeros here, I'm going to have this right here is going to give me plus or minus 4, and then it's going to give negative 5 halves. So I have a number line here that I need to draw. I'm going to have a negative 4 here, negative 5 halves, and then a positive 4. And because this is greater than 0 and not greater than or equal to, these are open circles. So I'm going to go in there and check my signs. I'm going to start with a negative 5. Okay, and I'm putting it in here. This is what I'm looking at. So negative 5 in here is going to give me negative, negative. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 plus 5, so it's still negative, so it's overall that's negative. We're in negative 5 halves, so I could pick like a negative 3, so that's going to give me a negative, I'm sorry, it's going to give me positive, and then negative in here, negative 3 would be negative, that would give me negative 6 plus 5, it's still negative, so overall that is positive. Between these two I can put in 0, so this would give me positive, negative, positive, Overall, that's negative. Put in 5, it's going to give me positive, positive, positive. And then what I'm looking for is for it to be greater than 0, so I'm looking for positive. Going from negative 4 to negative 5 halves. These are both open circles, so these are parentheses. And then from 4 to infinity, Never include my infinities. 4 is an open circle. My interval is part of my answer. And so is my number line. Make sure I can see your shading. All right, on number 9, I have got to get 0 by itself first, so I'm going to subtract these over. So this will give me x cubed minus 4x squared minus 37x minus... Oh, I'm sorry, plus 40, less than or equal to 0. All right, so I um, need to get my zeros here, which means I need to see if I can factor. Um, I cannot factor this one by grouping. So I do. I'm here to factor by grouping. Can I? No, because it's not quadratic. So what we did before was to just start testing it. But it would be good to know what my options are. So I've got to look at my possible zeros here. The coefficient is 1, so I really just need the factor of the 40. So your possibles are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. 3 doesn't work. Does work. 5 does work. 6 and 7 don't. 8 does. So 5 times 8 is 40, so then I can just back up. Or minus 20 and plus or minus. So then I start testing. I would start with one. No need to start randomly in the middle somewhere. So I test one. Do my simple division. This is one, negative four, negative 37, 40. So one, one, negative three, negative three, negative 40 negative 40, and 0. And beautifully enough, it works. Since 1 works, that means I now have that f of x is equal to x minus 1. Don't forget this term when you do this. Some of y'all are dropping that one off. And then this gives me the rest of that. x squared minus 3x minus 40. And then hopefully factor this. If I can't factor this, i got to go back to over here. But I'm pretty sure I can factor that one. 
Um, so f of x is equal to x minus 1. Uh, negative, so the signs are opposite. I need the numbers to multiply to give me 40, subtract to give me a negative 3. So that would be 8 and 5, and that would be a positive 5 and a negative 8. So I'd get my negative 3. I would double check that this works. 5 times 8 is negative 40. Positive 5, negative 8 gives me the negative 3. Good. Okay, so x plus 1 times x plus 5 times x is, get it from there, less than or equal to zero. So this is what I'm using. I'm going to draw in my line. I need my actual zeros, these are my possible ones. My actual zeros here are going to be negative five, negative one, and eight. So on here I have negative five, negative one, eight, and this is less than or equal to, so these are closed circles. I'm going to go and check my signs. When I substitute in a negative six, put it right here, it's going to give me negative, 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 overall that's positive. Negative two, would give me negative, positive, negative. Overall, that's positive. I can put a zero in here, so this is positive, positive, negative. So that's negative. Nine is going to be positive, positive, positive. Overall, that's positive. And since I want it to be less than or equal to zero, it's going to be um, negative. So I s no, I just realized I messed up. Negative times negative times negative is not a positive, it's a negative. Dang it. Okay. Then I want it to be less than zero, so I want my, my negatives. This is negative and this is negative. I caught myself because when I looked back down there, I knew I could tell that that didn't, net, that it was just wrong. So always make sure you're kind of double checking yourself. Uh, and I go from negative infinity to negative five. I do include my negative 5 because it's a closed circle. And then I go from negative 1 to 8, and I include both of those as well. So here's my intervals. Here's the number line. And that's it for the front.